Hello, and welcome. So before I begin, uh, let me just go through my checklist real quick about the game we're covering today. Does it involve cats? Check. A fun and visually pleasing art style? Check. Addictive and casual gameplay? Check. And a mo- A Street Cat's Tale is a survival roguelike adventure game in which you play the role of a lost kitten who is searching for their mother, as well as making friends and trying to survive in the unforgiving metropolitan environment. So this game was recommended to me by one of my old college friends. Um, long story short, back in 2017, uh, my senior project was a graphic novel with kind of the same premise. I don't want to talk about it though because it's objectively bad, so moving on. The cute art style and story is what intrigued me the most about A Street Cat's Tale but the simplistic and addictive gameplay felt comforting to unwind to, and made me want to try to befriend almost everyone within my playthrough. But with all of that said, what exactly is A Street Cat's Tale? A Street Cat's Tale, otherwise known as, and forgive my pronunciation here, Gigoyenyi Yagiga, or Stray Cat Story, was developed by Fimodev a small four-person team indie studio based in Korea and was published by CFK Co. Originally released for the Google Play and Apple iOS store on April 16, 2019 and was localized in English three months later on July 26, 2019 and was ported over to Steam and Nintendo Switch on September 5, 2019 and March 12, 2020 respectively. Interestingly, on August 11, 2021, the studio announced it closed its services and officially shut down later that year on November 20 meaning you can no longer obtain the game through the Google Play or Apple iOS ports. A Street Cat's Tale received the Made With Unity Korea Awards in 2019 for the best indie game. While the company is disbanded, one of the developers, who goes by Hakab on Twitter, is currently working on an indirect sequel, which I hope I get to play someday. A Street Cat's Tale kicks off with you talking to your mother about being hungry. Your mother, exhausted, goes out to find food. On her way back home later that night, you witness her getting hit by a car, but before you can do anything, you realize that your mother is in a copious amounts of debt as she's taken away to participate in this year's Squid Games. Hopefully, she'll return with money to feed you. And now, you must set off on an adventure to find out where she's gone. You must survive the city landscape for a total of 13 days. You have three meters to look out for. Your health, which if you die, your playthrough is over, your hunger, which if it reaches zero, you'll gradually start to lose health, and time. Halfway through the meter, the day will turn to night. If you sleep in your bed, your health and hunger will be partially restored. However, if the player stays up all night, they'll be penalized the next morning with some of their health and hunger gone. You can manage your health and hunger by eating certain foods. Trash items will fill your belly, which will be detrimental to your health. Other items like fish, rats, and cat food will fill both. You can find food and items by searching trash cans and cardboard boxes. Each day, the contents in them are randomly generated, usually consisting of trash-based foods. You can also find once-a-day items such as glass shards or flowers at specific locations on the map. There are also items such as big fish, gloves, and bandages from kiosks that you can steal from. However, doing so will come at a cost of your relationship with the human NPCs. Speaking of NPCs, there are nine characters that you can interact with. Five humans, three, technically four cats, and a dog. Each of them you can only talk to once a day, but you may interact and be friendly with them, leave them alone, or give them a gift. You're also only able to carry around one item at a time, so knowing when to eat an item or to give it to someone to build up friendships starts to become a factor you'll juggle with in this game. As your friendship level increases with the NPCs, they'll eventually give you side quests to complete once a certain level is met. This can either be talk to a certain character or characters, or retrieve a certain item. Each character has their own backstory, and it's fun to explore and learn more about each of them, such as the elder cat reminiscing about his owner who died, and talks about seeing him soon, Simon being stuck in a stressful, dead-end corporate job, or how Sarah is being bullied in school. While the lore isn't super in-depth, these little glimpses into the cast gives a sense of life happening around you. Human characters, at first, are just silhouettes, as your kitten's perception of them are otherworldly-like figures. You also cannot comprehend what they're saying at first. From speaking to the other cats, most of them have a disdain or a cautionary attitude towards humans, as some humans can be helpful, while others are simply cruel. Even Doggo, I, I'm sorry, I love that name, I love that his name is Doggo, 
Even Doggo struggles with abandonment issues from his previous owners, but has found peace with his new caretaker. But as he befriend the human characters more, the silhouettes go from a pixelated version of them to eventually a clear visualization as a human that they can trust. Unlike the cats and Doggo, some of the human NPCs are only available during the day, and some at night. At any time you can also check your status with the NPCs and see their friendship level, as well as what items they like and don't like to receive. There's this level of micromanaging that goes into a street cat's tale, where I felt compelled to help out almost all the characters as I can, while trying to make the best routes and make most out of my time. You can also upgrade your bed as well by providing the cat Jimmy with a variety of items that he asks of you, adding another task to my daily routine. You can upgrade your house three times providing a few helpful bonuses, such as slightly increasing your run speed and giving you additional health and stomach capacity. Another benefit is that the second and third upgrade will give you a chance to speak to each NPC two or three times a day respectively, making it significantly easier to befriend them. You're also a lot less likely to die after getting these upgrades. I got killed on my first attempt, and I got dangerously close to dying on my second run. But now you can just hit me with your car if you want to, I really don't care. I also became a trash eating gremlin and just started gobbling down everything in my path. Changes made to your bed are also carried over during subsequent playthroughs as well. Which does sadly take the challenge out on future runs. From a gameplay perspective, A Street Cat's Tale feels a bit on the simplistic and smaller budget side as you only traverse one map and interact with only a few NPCs. Your cat's walk speed can also feel painfully slow, especially in the beginning, which might be a hard sell for some players, understandably so. Personally, this slower pace gave me time to think and brainstorm on which item or NPC I should hit up after I completed my current task. During my initial playthrough, I never felt like I had nothing to do, nor did I ever feel stressed or pressured to get stuff done in the game. At its most basic level, A Street Cat's Tale is effectively just Fetch Quest the game, but I never found the experience to be boring during my initial run. A standard playthrough should last you about an hour and a half or so if you're looking for a small bite-sized experience. There are also multiple achievements for you to unlock as well, though these are all really just tied to the NPC side quests. So I'm going to talk about the general story and the conclusion to A Street Cat's Tale. If what I've mentioned so far has piqued your interest and you don't want this short little game to be spoiled, then here is a timestamp to skip this section. During your playthrough, you learn from the other cats about where your mother must have been taken through the help of the elder cat and the boss cat. You can also help and befriend Freckles and Dotty, two orphan kittens by bringing them food and teaching them how to hunt rats. Within the passing days, you start to really build a relationship with these other cats. You also learn that Michelle, one of the five human NPCs, took your mother, however with no guarantee that she's alive. After the 13th day, with the knowledge you've acquired, you go out to find your mother and... Wait... What's happening? Dear Mama, Mama, where are you? Other cats hug often each other to sleep, but I am alone, trying to sleep in the cold. Rainy days like today is especially colder. It is hard for me to find food on my own. Sometimes humans feed me, but only sometimes. I try to hunt, but other cats get angry for intruding their territory. Mama, I'm hungry. I am lonely and lost. I, uh, I, I really got choked up uh, the first time I, I read this. I, I figured a Street Cat's Tale would probably make me feel sad going in, but that expectation was sort of dropped due to how quick and a little clunky the intro sequence was. The dialogue throughout my playthrough has been more so on the lighter and playful side, and I was really surprised just how impactful these ending monologues would be. As you can probably guess, I got a bad ending. And in fact, there's actually 11 possible endings that the player can achieve. So each ending is based on your friendship level with each character. You can only reach a level 7 friendship with a single character during a playthrough, which will trigger that character's ending. As I stated earlier, you learn about each character's backstories by performing side quests for them. I won't cover all of the endings today, but I do want to talk about one of my favorites, 
The Freckles and Dottie ending was really touching, as at first, they're just two playful kittens who don't trust you, only to later then accept you as their friend. Towards the end of their arc, you learn that they're undergoing the same plight as you, as they have also lost their mother. Your last mission is to bring them a flower to help them cope with their loss and say farewell to their mother, to make her feel less lonely on her journey to the afterlife. This ends with you, Freckles, Dottie, and the boss cat making a bittersweet send-off to the deceased loved ones, accepting that they're gone and letting go, and forming a family based on their shared experiences. I think I'd be doing an injustice if I uh, didn't also cover the route in which you actually do find your mother. As I stated earlier, this route requires you to befriend Michelle, which your character tends to act the rudest with, and they don't trust her, even biting her hand and causing her to bleed. Your last two objectives is to get her band-aids for her bites and gloves for her to wear so she can pet you as you open up to her. She then traps you in a cage and takes you to the hospital, much to your cat's surprise that their mother is there waiting for them. So this was the last ending that I got, and I felt it was a fitting way to send off the game. However, considering how melancholy some of the other endings are, I was fully prepared to be greeted with YOUR MOTHER IS DEAD! <laughs> just for that last punch in the throat. But no, this was actually a very sweet and cute way to end the game. Once you get the final bed upgrade, it makes getting the other endings a lot easier and less time consuming, as you can just cheese the game by only focusing on which specific character's ending you're going for. And once you've reached level 7 with said character, you can just sleep off the remaining days. Which sadly does hinder the replayability aspect of this roguelike game. This also made my efforts of helping everyone within a single playthrough feel kind of pointless. I think if we also got to see the different outcomes for the other characters based on our friendship levels, it would have made trying to do everything in one run all the more worth it. So with the 11 endings and 9 characters, what are the other two? Well, there's the solitude ending, which you end up alone, and... Oh no. Dear Mama, I'm not sure who, but someone told me to close my eyes, that I no longer had to suffer from cold or hunger. I feel so strange, warm, and at home. Like the time I was with you. We... We can be together again someday, right? Someone is calling for me. I need to go now. Goodbye, Mama. These epilogues really got me teary-eyed uh, when I first read them, and it really made me want to see every possible ending that this game had. Each of them are bittersweet or just downright heartbreaking. I must admit, however, that getting all the endings from a gameplay perspective was a total crawl, and the excitement I had during my initial playthrough was gone. After unlocking all the endings, you are rewarded with a bit of extra lore as you get to see the flashbacks and the losses that Doggo boss and elder cat experienced prior to the game, as well as what happened to your kitten's mother after she was taken. I do wish we also got to see what happened to Freckles and Dottie's mother though, but otherwise this was a cute bonus to end the game on. The themes of family, loss, acceptance, loneliness, and home present within the Street Cat's Tale does a pretty good job of making the player empathize with not just the protagonist, but the other characters around them, and putting the player into the perspective of not just a lost child looking for their mother, but as someone who's trying to find a sense of belonging while trying to survive. I wouldn't say A Street Cat's Tale has done anything groundbreaking, but I was more invested into the narrative this game had to tell than I thought I was going to be. Visually, I think A Street Cat's Tale is very pleasing to look at and has a lot of personality. All the cats are adorable, and while the animations are very simple, they get the job done. I do wish that your cat also had a portrait during dialogue, however, as I think it would have helped make moments feel a little bit more impactful if we saw them emote. I also found the world map to be memorable the more I played it. The UI is also simple and clean, though I do wish the list of characters was a bit more organized. It should have gone from cats to doggo to humans instead of, well, this. I also picked up on some translation issues and grammatical errors during my playthrough. The soundtrack is also pleasant, 
Though there's only two songs. There's the main track that plays during gameplay that's very upbeat, relaxing, and chill, and never got too old or annoying. It actually reminded me a lot of Animal Crossing. And on rainy days, you get to listen to the ambient calming sounds of rainfall. And the piano ending song was also really impactful and made the emotional moments hit hard. The sound effects are also good. Each person has their own sound when you interact with them. However, there is only one cat meow clip that is used for all of the cats. So um, get ready to hear a lot. So should you play a street cat's tail? Yeah, I'd say so. From a gameplay perspective, the game doesn't really have strong replay value, sadly, and I'd recommend against this game if the thought of fetch questing at a slow pace sounds unappealing to you, or if you're looking for something more action-oriented. But after going through the chaotic and stressful holiday season, I had a wonderful time just sitting down, taking in my time, and relaxing to this hidden gem, and seeing everything that this game had to offer. If you're looking for a small and simplistic experience to sink a few hours or an evening into, that may or may not make you cry at the end, then I think this might be the game for you. A Street Cat's Tale is available on Nintendo Switch and Steam, and I would encourage you to check it out. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your viewership, and thank you for spending your time with me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave me a like and subscribe if you're new. Um, this was a lot of fun to do, uh, as always. Um, this was gonna be a quick vid, but then I kept on adding more to my script, and, you know, I might have missed my Halloween and Christmas video and all that, but, you know, I did cattails last year, so maybe we can do, like, a New Year tradition where I cover a cozy cat game at the beginning of every year, so... <laughs> That would be fun. Um, I also have another video in the works that I plan to have done by Christmas, but I do need to playtest it more before I can like definitively say everything that I want to say with it, but I should have that done soon. Um, I really want to thank everybody who has recently subscribed to my channel. Uh, by the time of me recording this, we're at 1,124 subs, which is insane because I was at like I want to say 175 by the time I finished Soma, so um, I really want to just welcome everybody who's new here. Um, thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking and sharing, um, thank you for also just watching some of my older videos, um, and I, I, I really want to thank everybody for just all the positive comments and support I've been getting. Um, it really means a lot to me. and. It makes me happy that I can entertain you guys with my work. Um, I promise to keep on making more fun content down the line. And I want to also try to do more interviews with other developers whenever I get the chance to. Um, but yeah, from the bottom of my heart, just thank you all. It, it really means a lot to me. Um, I don't have too much else to add. I have a Twitch if you wish to follow me on there. I'm going to at least try to stream once a week, um, probably in the Wednesday-Thursday area, um, though that's subject to change by the time you're watching this video. Uh, but I am currently playing through Metroid Dread, so if you're interested in following me out there, uh, that would be awesome. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday season and a great new year. I hope that 2022 will be a much better year for everybody. And with all that said, I hope that you have a wonderful day, my friend, and that you stay safe and take care.